In this video, I'll share two MATLAB implementations of the newton raphson method for root finding. Just as a one-sentence review, the newton raphson method works by extending the tangent line to the function at the guess, following the tangent line down to the x-axis, and repeating until you converge on the root. Here's a function m file I've written to implement the newton raphson method. It's called newton raphson underscore xtol because it uses the percent relative error to determine when to stop iterating. I have another function called newton raphson underscore ftol, which uses a tolerance based on the function evaluated at the root. We'll get to that one in just a second. Anyways, this function accepts five inputs, an anonymous function representing the equation you're solving, another anonymous function representing the derivative of the equation you're solving, the initial guess, your desired stopping criterion, and your desired maximum number of iterations. Supplying a desired maximum number of iterations prevents things like excessive computation times. For instance, if the percent relative error is really small, yet above the stopping criterion, but the percent relative error doesn't change much in successive iterations, it might just be better to let the algorithm terminate after a certain number of iterations rather than continuing until the error is met. The function returns four outputs. The root estimate, the value of the function evaluated at the root estimate, the final percent relative error, and the number of iterations it took. This construction is purposely very similar to the bisection method functions I wrote in another video. The first part of the function does some preliminary checks to see if you called the function correctly. The nargin variable checks how many inputs were provided to the function. If you call the function with less than three inputs, it will give you an error. You can leave the es and or maxit inputs blank when you call the function, and if so, these lines assign default values to the es and or maxit variables. Now we get to the meat of the function. The iteration occurs within the while loop. In each iteration, we store the previous value of xr in the xr old variable, then compute the current iteration's xr value. We then compute the percent relative error, then use an if statement to determine whether or not to break the while loop. The loop is broken if we fall under the error tolerance, or if we hit the maximum number of iterations. Once the while loop breaks, the function returns the current root estimate and the value of the function when evaluated at the root. Here's the other function m file I mentioned. It's very similar to the one I just showed you, but this function uses a tolerance in y instead of a tolerance in x. In other words, this one checks if f of xr is sufficiently close to zero after every iteration instead of checking if the percent relative error in successive root estimates is sufficiently small. The code is pretty similar. That said, you can write your own newton raphson function if you want to. Some of you might think it's more logical to replace the while loop with a for loop that runs from 1 to the maximum number of iterations, and that's also perfectly valid. Some of you might also enjoy having one function m file which can account for either a tolerance in x or y, but my personal preference is to have a separate function m file for each stopping criterion. Regardless of whether you use my code straight up, you modify them to your liking, or you write your own, you should keep these as a standalone function m file since you'll probably be reusing them a lot during this unit. If you put them in your working directory, you can call the functions directly from a script file without needing to copy and paste the code at the end of the script. Here's a short test case I wrote to illustrate the usage of these two functions. We want to find a root of the function sine x squared minus x times cosine x minus 2. I computed the derivative of the function by hand and programmed it into another anonymous function, df. You can verify df by hand if you'd like. I have no clue what f looks like off the top of my head, but I'm guessing it's periodic because of the sine and cosine terms. If so, we'll have infinite roots, so we need to pick our initial guess very carefully, otherwise newton raphson might locate a root we don't want. For now, I'm going to set our initial guess x0 equals 1, just as a placeholder until we plot the function. I set a stopping criterion of 1e-3 and did not choose to set a maximum number of iterations. The rest of this section plots the function. In the second section, I call the two newton raphson functions and use some fprintf statements to neatly print the results to the command window. I have a breakpoint so I don't execute any code at or beyond line 30. For now, I just want to plot the function to get a better understanding of its behavior. Just from the small snapshot of this function, it does look periodic. 
Plotting from x equals 0 to x equals 10 doesn't really tell us much, so I'm going to increase the upper x-axis limit within the fplot command so we can see more of the function. This confirms that the function is periodic and we have infinite roots. Because newton raphson can diverge entirely or converge onto a different root, we should be very precise when picking our initial guess. I noticed that there was a root around x equals 2.5, so let's use 2.5 as our initial guess and see if both newton raphson functions converge to the root. Based on the command window outputs, we can see that both functions more or less obtain the same answer. In the first function, the final percent relative error is well under the tolerance we provided. It converged to this answer in two iterations. In the second function, we see that f of xr was attained within the tolerance in just one iteration. Now let's try to locate the root around x equals 4. Let's change our initial guess to 3.8 since 3.8 seems pretty close to the root. Both functions converged to about x equals 8 in 34-ish iterations, which is a considerable amount of effort. This illustrates the danger of the newton raphson method. Even though 3.8 seems reasonably close to 4, it's evidently not close enough. This is why plotting is so imperative. Let's try another initial guess. And now we converged on the proper root. Once again, be sure to plot liberally and use the plots to complement these two function m files. You can download both of these function m files and the script file in the video description. Feel free to reuse these functions in your own codes or make any modifications to the functions you deem necessary. See you next time.